Before we begin, shall we bow our heads for prayer? Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the showers of blessing, a good night rest, and right now, the blessings of attending this uh, Bible study online. Even though you are, we are a few in number, you promise that while two or three are gathered in your name, your presence will be there. So we invite your presence to join us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we're going to have uh, a few people joining us. Let me share screen. Okay, wait, we're going to, there is some... Uh, Technical thing, let me settle it. Huh? All right. Let me share screen again. All right. Okay, we're going to start. Okay. Today's topic is from Jacob to Israel, from supplanter to privilege. Very interesting story. Uh, Jacob uh, did not live a righteous life, as you know. Uh, even though he was chosen by God, he went the shortcut. So he suffered the punishment of being exiled for 20 years. And now, he was finally back to the promised land. And he had to confront the rage of his brother Esau because of his past mistakes. He asked for God and his brother's forgiveness and he became a new person. That's why he is called Israel. And some issues arose within his family. So he encouraged them to abandon all idolatry and embrace uh, a covenant with God. Okay. So that's our study today. Okay. Jacob is forgiven. Human forgiveness and God's forgiveness. Then there are family issues after you are uh, Put right with God, you know, as long as we are on this earth, there will be a lot of problems that you face. So when you accept Christ as your Savior, or you, uh, you backslided, and then you come back to God, God doesn't take away your problems. In fact, the problems sometimes can be multiplied. Okay, we ask uh, Paul to read this. Good morning, everybody. Yep. Then he said, your, na your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with, men, and with men and have prevailed. Genesis 32 verse 28. Yeah. So the name of Jacob is actually a, a supplanter. The one, the one who took uh, or take somebody's uh, property. Okay. A cheater. But now he's become a prevailer. So that's what Israel is. So why was Jacob afraid of Esau? We already studied because he stole his birthright okay, and stole the blessing. Esau had promised to kill Jacob. Jacob wanted to make up with him. But Esau was coming with 400 men. Jacob prayed and clung to God's promises. You know, you, you study earlier. Jacob worked 14 years to marry Leah and Rachel. And then another six years to uh, accumulate his wealth. So all in all, 20 years, he was in exile. And after 20 years, Esau still remembered that his brother is coming going back to his father's house. Okay. Somehow during that time, 
they have spies, you know. They will know when you are coming. So apparently Esau heard that his brother is coming, going back to his home, and he's ready with 400 men to meet him halfway. He did not want to kill him in his father's house. He wanted to kill him in the wilderness because he doesn't want to grieve his father. Jacob could not do anything else, so he prayed and asked for God's forgiveness. His spiritual struggle became a physical struggle as well. So finally, Jacob held on to the man. There was a wrestling match because he realized that the person who was wrestling with him, the Bible mentioned is a man. Okay, it's a man, but actually it was Jesus himself. It was the incarnated, pre-incarnated Jesus. And they fought till from evening till daybreak. Jacob uh, refused to let the man go or the angel go until the angel could said, let go. It's already you know, daybreak. He said, no. I will not let you go until you have blessed me. Then the angel said, or, or Jesus himself said, I will change your name from Jacob to Israel because you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. So that was a, a powerful assurance that he received forgiveness from God. Okay? He has the confidence to face his brother. Do you know that uh, in life, many of us are carrying a lot of burden because we have wrong people. Okay, If you do a self-evaluation, what wrong have you done, whether consciously or unconsciously? You are carrying heavy burden. Okay? Or you have wronged God. You have not trusted him. And you went the shortcut and uh, created a lot of problems. Okay, we asked Mr. Sung, could you read this question for us? Over and over we see deceit and deception, as well as acts of kindness and grace in these accounts. What does this tell us about human nature? Yeah. What does it tell you about human nature, Mr. Song? Human nature is unpredictable. Sometimes yeah. change from good, sometimes to bad, sometimes consciously, sometimes unconsciously. Do you know that uh, we should not trust any human? We can only trust God. That's why when we talk about discipleship, we must lead people to Jesus. Why? Because only Jesus is unchanging. Do not follow a mortal man. I remember I had this experience when the pastor is being transferred to another church. A lot of uh, church members will follow him. Actually, that's not right. They should remain in church and follow Jesus. Do not follow the person. Because once you follow the person, the pers once the person make a mistake, you get very discouraged. That is building your faith on the sifting sand. Instead of building your house on the rock, you're building your house on the sand. Now you know why a lot of people, at first they joined the church, they accepted Jesus as their savior, they were baptized. Then over the years, they become discouraged. They look at people. Don't look at people. Okay. As far as possible, we must be good examples okay, to those who, whom we mentor. But the, the mentoring process is to lead them to Jesus, not lead them to us, you know. So it's very important that we search our hearts to make sure that we are not creating 
human idols. Okay, this is very important. So human nature is subject to uh, a lot of temptation. Uh, later on, you will find out what kind of temptation that we have that we need to overcome. Okay, uh, GM, can you read this for us? Sabbath all. And Jacob said, I have seen your face as though as I had seen the face of God and you were pleased with me. Yeah. Genesis 33. So this one proved to you uh, that Jacob, when he wrestled with that angel or man, he was actually wrestling with God because he knew that this is no ordinary angel. He was Jesus himself. And after he had received forgiveness from God, he is ready to seek forgiveness from his brother. Okay, later on, uh, because of the long passage, we are not going to read now. After today, uh, after today's uh, lesson, you can go back and read Genesis 33. Okay, and you will find out Jacob was actually very wealthy. He prepared a lot of gifts, okay, to pacify his brother Esau. Okay. And he also prostrated himself seven times in front of him. He wanted to make it clear that he was not going to demand the fulfillment of his brother's blessing. Actually, uh, he gave them, he gave his brother a lot of sheep, a lot of camels, a lot of goats, a lot of all those flocks. So Jacob it was very smart. He was also very generous with his gift. So these 400 men, when they receive all these gifts, their hands are occupied with all these gifts. Okay. So the culture in the, in the East is this. Uh, you cannot harm those people who are very kind to you. You cannot, you cannot do it. Okay. Can you imagine if somebody saved your life and then you are asked to kill the, the person who saved you? That is an unthinkable request. So the 400 men, suddenly they became, they realized that Jacob is not an evil person. How could you kill him? And then Esau also saw the the brother's transformation, especially uh, when after he wrestled with the angel, the angel touched the socket of his hip, so it became dislocated. And Jacob, after working for 20 years, he looked very haggard. He was in the sun, day in, day out. So he was haggard. He was old. By the way, Esau and Jacob, they were of the same age because they were twins, isn't it? But because of the hard labor, Jacob aged a lot. So he aged very much. He looked like an old man. So and he, when he looked like an old man, he walked with a limb because the angel touched his hip and it was dislocated. And he was limping and he looked old. And then not only that, he prostrated himself seven times. Seven times means what? That means, uh, my brother Esau, even though I cheated your birthright, I stole your blessing from the father. Now I'm going to pay you back. So when I prostrate seven times, uh, I'm going to give up my blessing. Okay, I'm going to return to you. That is a powerful uh, confession. In fact, he, he's making restitution. So if you want to seek forgiveness from somebody, you have to make restitution. Okay, today we need to say sorry to those whom we have offended. So when they imagine it was a very touching scene, uh, he saw reaction uh, astonished Jacob. Instead of uh, getting angry, he hugged his brother Jacob. And then they wept and they cried for a long, long time. And they start to ask each other, how are you? 
And then they, instead of saying, I'm going to kill you, he said, uh, I miss you, I'm going to love you, and so on. All kinds of uh, words of exchange. Suddenly they realize that, you know, this is my own brother. Okay, we came from the same parents. How could I kill him? So God's word has been fulfilled. You have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. So Jacob finally received forgiveness from God and finally received forgiveness from his brother. Jacob had become a new man and he became Israel. He had been forgiven by God and his brother and he knew he didn't deserve it. And this is called the grace of God. So the grace of God was given by him, by God, or by Jesus, the grace of God was given by Esau. Now, brothers and sisters in Christ, sometimes, uh, even though we are God's children, we can do silly things sometimes. And we can do wicked things because of our selfishness. Because we, we, we tend to run ahead of God. And when we run ahead of God, we, we just want to achieve the goal. We are not interested in the process. I tell you, God is more interested in the process. What is the process? The process of trusting Him. The pro process of growing to be like Jesus. The process of character transformation. So going to heaven uh, is not the main objective of God. Okay? Why do I say that? Remember the story of the rich young ruler? He said, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Right? He's just interested in going to heaven. Whereas Jesus say, if you want to be good, okay? Uh, keep the commandments and sell all that you have and follow me. So this is a process. Uh, you need to have a self-distrust. You cannot trust yourself. You also need to uh, realize that God is all you need. Okay, not not material things, not human idols. Okay? That's why. Human teachings will fail. Human examples are finite and limited. God is our example. So the process of uh, Christ-likeness is what God wants in our lives. Okay? And this is a very important lesson. I hope all of us can learn. Okay. We can ask the next question. Can we ask uh, Melissa? Oh, Melissa cannot. She just told me she's on the way to church. We ask uh, Lawrence. Uh, Lawrence? Okay. Uh, what connection is there between Jacob's experience of seeing the face of God? Daniel? Jacob's experience of seeing the face of his brother. What is the indication of this connection in regard to our relationship with God and our relationship with our brothers, wherever they may be? Okay. Do you understand the question? The question is a bit long. Eh? Is there a connection uh, between Jacob's experience with God and his experience with his brother. Okay, is there an, uh, a connection? Okay, Lawrence, I have to mute you because there's a lot of background noise uh, from you. So I have to mute you. Okay, the rest can answer also. Uh, you can just unmute and can answer. What is the implication of this connection in regard with, to our relationship with God? So in other words, to say, if you seek forgiveness from God, uh, how does it connect it with your forgiveness with your fellow men? Okay, that's why brothers is inverted commas. Can you actually have true forgiveness when you do not
experience forgiveness with God or from God. Okay, those who are able to unmute and join the discussion, uh, you may answer. Okay, while you're thinking of an answer, let me share with you. Do you know that in any organization, in any family relationship, or in any church uh, fellowship, the most troublesome thing to deal with uh, is actually human relationship. Are you aware? Most of the conflict that we have at work, uh, in our social life, in our church life, has to do with relationship, human relationship. And that is the most difficult. Why? Anyone wants to share? Why, why is it the most difficult? It looks like nobody is going to share. <laughs> it is most difficult. Why? Right? Because most of us are selfish. Okay. Even in a marital relationship, we have quarrels. Why? Because we are selfish. Okay. And uh, as long as we do not receive the forgiveness of God, we will always be insecure with our lives. And we want to perform. So we feel our emptiness uh, with money. Okay, You like to let people know that you are successful. You like to let people know that you have friends, you have power. So all these uh, are actually, in God's eyes, uh, are not important. The most important thing is, uh, uh, in God's eyes, uh, we are right with God. So when we are right with God, when we experience conflict with human relationship, we are able to let go and let God. We don't want to fight for our rights. We want to suffer injustices because God is our refuge. He is our avenger because he said vengeance is mine. He will repay. Okay? God wants us to be like Jesus suffer on behalf of our fellow men and uh, to, to overcome evil with love. So if you do not experience the forgiveness of God, then you will become a very harsh person, very judgmental. I think we all are like that, especially myself. Uh, when I'm a hard, hearted person, I tend to measure people according to my standard. Although God has a very high standard, he forgives us. He has something that we don't have that is called grace. Okay? And this graciousness uh, is a divine nature that God wants us to learn in the process of achieving the goal of eternal life. Okay, let's do the next one. Okay, uh, we ask. Okay, Jen, are you there to read? Are you able to read? Jen, is it Jenny? Uh, can you unmute to read? If not, we ask. Uh, Stephen Quilindo, Elder Stephen, are you able to read? Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, the violence breeds violence. The son of Jacob were grieved and very angry because he had done a disgraceful thing in Israel by lying with Jacob's daughter, a thing which ought not to be done. That's Genesis 34, 7. Okay, Israel finally live in peace huh? after uh, Jacob, uh, Jacob and Israel the same. Huh? Finally live in peace. He bought the first piece of land at Canaan and built an altar to God. But unfortunately, peace soon faded when this Canaanite man called Shechem, Shechem or Shechem, raped Dina, Jacob's daughter. However, he wanted to make amends. He realized it's wrong. So if you were to read the story in Genesis 34, uh, he wants to marry Dina. Okay. Some people pronounce it as Dina or Dina. So Simeon and Levi, the two sons of Jacob, wanted everything to go according to God's will. Okay. Nevertheless, they betrayed and killed and plundered them. So instead of telling outright to Shechem that what you have done to my sister is wrong, they make a plot okay, to pretend that they're going to lay down the conditions for him to, ex to marry the, their sister. So this was a terrible thing. They say, okay, we can accept provided all of you are circumcised. So the whole village, the whole household, the whole village was circumcised. And then they are, when they are circumcised during their painful period, the sons of Jacob went into the village and killed every person. Okay, and plunder everything that they have. So not only the sons of Jacob lied, they committed murder. They committed plunder. Okay. It was a terrible thing that they have done. And Jacob was more worried about the consequences of his son's act than their horrible acts themselves. So Jacob was very angry. Okay. Evidently, God does not approve this. He acted to bring this family to a new relationship. You know? God's grace came into the picture again. The sons of Jacob uh, committed the father's sin. You know, Jacob lied and stole and committed all sorts of wrong. This, this sin uh, passed down from one generation to the second generation. Okay? And it is a terrible thing when you when you realize that one wrong can lead to so many things. And God is a gracious God. God is ready to forgive. Okay, Jesse, you, you just came in. You can want to you want to read for us uh, Genesis 35, verse 2. Okay. And Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, put away the foreign gods that are among you. Purify yourselves and change your garments. Uh, okay. God said to Jacob, I want to renew a covenant with you and your family. Okay. So Jacob said, okay. I want to renew this covenant. So this is what you will do. All your family has to confess your sin to God. And this confession is not just verbal but it's actually through actions. Okay, his family need to come closer to God to understand God's grace. So he asked them to remove all the idols and the response was unanimous. God protected them. Jacob built an altar as a reminder of his first encounter with God. So what did God's blessings to Israel include? Okay, it includes being fruitful and it includes being the messianic seed. He said the, the Messiah will come from you. Okay, a savior will come from your descendants. This is the first.
first blessing and God will bless you. And then next, you will possess the promised land. Can you imagine, in spite of their uh, evil or mass of massacre, the whole tribe of Shechem, God still forgive them. God still use them. What does it tell you about God? You know, sometimes uh, we don't understand why God is so gracious. So when this happened to you, you have committed great wrong and God said, you are still my child. I still love you. You will still be blessed by me. How do you feel? That's why the, the good news of Jesus Christ is the gospel. Okay? We are saved not because we deserve it. We are saved because of God's grace. Okay, we asked uh, Paul to read this for us. <clears throat> the process of repentance consists in more than a physical move from one place to another or a move from one church to another. Most important, it is that we seek of God's grace to purge the idolatry in our hearts regardless of where we live because we can make idols out of just about anything. Ah, this is a very powerful statement. Some people, they have done great wrong. So because of the shame, they move from one church to another, or they move from one country to another. But God said, this is not important. The important thing is you must move, you, you must move your idols out of your heart. Okay, put idolatry from your heart. What are the idolatry? Okay, and these are very important that we need to know. Uh, DM, read this question for us, please. Me, is it? Yeah. What are subtle ways that idolatry can find its way into our hearts and what can we do about it? Okay, you may want to try to answer this question. Are there any idols in our hearts today? This is the application question. Eh? Not the physical idols of ancient times, I believe. But uh, anything that you place before God in priority. Ah, for example? For example, uh, worldly things like prestige, Money, uh, what call career ambition, popularity, you know, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes uh, peer pressure. Mm -hmm. okay. Some people like to uh, appear to be acceptable in a group, some people put priority in. Uh, acceptability, popularity. Now, the next question is, what can we do about it? Uh, for me personally, uh, bef before I was baptized, there was a time when I was uh, rather addicted to farming games, computer games. So I tell myself it's not right. But then I also realize I'm weak. So I, I prayed to God. I told him very, very frankly uh, that I've, I've derived pleasure from, more pleasure from playing uh, than from reading the Bible because God is able to take just about anything so long as we are truthful to him. And then, yeah, he helped me kick off the habit. Okay, very good. Anyone else like to contribute to this uh, question? What can we do about the tangible and non-tangible idols in our lives? Now, when you take away something, eh, you have to replace something, isn't it? Otherwise, you'll be more empty. Eh? The Bible says, if one evil spirit 
is taken away. Uh, if the heart is empty, seven evil more spirits will come and fill the void. What about the rest? What can we do about the idolatry in our, in our lives? Okay, it's open for discussion. Yeah. Uh, Pastor Shan, I, I, when I look at this question, even the little things that we might think are unimportant, uh, as a sister said before, anything that we place as priority before God. And I see that often food also becomes our idol. We will go to great lengths to go hunting for food, extol the virtues of that food, this food or that food. And um, at that moment, it becomes also an idol. And I guess the first step is in recognizing as uh, I think Sister GM is it just said, she recognized that the, the, the playing was taking a, a place in her life that was above everything else. And likewise, the first thing is in the recognition. Often we don't realize we have an issue. So this is the first step is to recognize it. Because once we have recognized it, then it is easier than for us to take the step of uh, going to God for help, going, for, going to godly brothers and sisters for support, uh, dig into the Bible to see what the Bible say about it, and uh, especially, um, as you say, replacing it with something else, like, uh, you know, you remove the food, or I'm not saying remove the food completely, but putting it in its right perspective, but then placing something else uh, in its place. Okay, for, thank you very much. For GM who mentioned just now, she gave up uh, gaming and uh, all these uh, bad addictions. Uh, need to be replaced with something more healthy. For example, uh, involved in church service, church activity. Uh, Jen, do you want to say something? You are muted. Uh, yes. I if I share yeah. how I job. Okay, basically for me it's very simple. Uh, what I do is I always tell myself that I have to die. And I adopt this principle that I died yesterday and today I'm dying. So whatever that is coming against me or tempting me or you know uh, causing me to fall. Uh, I knew that I'm already dead, so I would not usually want to react. Mm, okay. Yeah, so, actually, I'm a flash in that sense. What, what you say uh, is quite, quite biblical because uh, Apostle Paul said, I die daily, right? I die daily to Jesus, and then I raise to be alive in the spirit so that I can walk in the spirit. So when you uh, overcome your addiction, your, your wrong priorities, you need to replace it with the right priorities. You need to replace it with uh, uh, good things. For example, uh, if you are no longer playing games, uh, addictive games, you need to replace it with Christian music. Okay? When your hands find to do uh, worldly things, change it to uh, church things. That's why it's so important that uh, we join a church fellowship. Okay. Uh, after this uh, COVID-19, we are able to have lunch fellowship, right? Uh, all of us are able to bring food for potluck. We start to invite one another to our homes and so on. So next week, our, uh, our Sabbath school class, we are going to go to Rebecca's house for potluck. 
So all of us are, will be bringing food. So we look, really look forward to having godly fellowship where we can share with one another our joys and our sorrows. So it's very important uh, to have uh, worship, have fellowship, and then uh, we, we need to carry the burden for one another. Okay. That's why it's important uh, to join a, a Sabbath school class, a, a cell group, and, and as well as a fellowship. Okay. Nothing can replace that. Okay, then what happened? So Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephraim, that is Bethlehem. Jacob had to face the death of his dear ones. Okay, first his mother, Rebecca, had died before he returned home, and that really grieved him. And then Deborah, Rebecca's nurse, died in battle. And uh, Rachel died on the way to Bethlehem while giving birth to the son, Benjamin. Okay, the son was at first called Benoni, which is the son of my sorrow. Then Jacob renamed him Benjamin, the son of my right hand. Okay. Soon after that, Reuben dishonored his father by sleeping with Bilia, uh, Bilha. Bilha is actually the, the maid servant or Jacob's concubine. Okay, maid servant of Leah and uh, his concubine. And Jacob remained silent, but he eventually took away the birthright of Reuben because of this. Reuben, as the firstborn, no longer became the firstborn right. Okay, and Israel and his family were not perfect. However, God was willing to fulfill his plan with them, no matter how imperfect they were. Mr. Sung, can you read this for us? This uh, quotation. Okay. <clears throat> uh, from the night that night of wrestling beside. Uh, sorry, uh, can you unmute again? Uh, sorry. Start yeah. again. From that night of wrestling beside the chapot, Jacob had come for a different man. Self-confidence had been uprooted, hence fought. The early cunning was no longer seen. In place of craft and deception, his life was marked by simplicity and truth. He had learned the lesson of simple reliance upon the almighty arm. And amid trial and affliction, he bowed in humble submission to the will of God. The faith of Abraham and Isaac appear undeemed in Jacob. Okay, thank you. You see, Jacob became a changed man. And how do we know? In spite of the atrocities done by his sons to the family of Shechem, the massacre, in spite of the sin of his firstborn, who uh, committed incense, incest, to uh, the concubine of Jacob, in spite of um, all the evil that they have done, Jacob realized that he cannot be judgmental because he himself was also doing the wrong thing. He cannot punish his children. He cannot administer human justice. He realized that he should leave all this to God. And he became a changed man, just like God, you know, humble. We ask uh, Stephen to read this for us. Okay, Jacob's experience during that night of wrestling and anguish represents the trial through which the people of God must pass just before Christ's second coming. Such will be the experience of God's people in their final struggle with the powers of evil. God will test their faith, their perseverance, their confidence, 
in his power to deliver them. Satan will endeavor to terrify them with the thought that their cases are hopeless, that their sins have been too great to receive pardon. They will have a deep sense of shortcomings. And as they review their lives, their hopes will sink. But remembering the greatness of God's mercy and their own sincere repentance, they will plead his promises made through Christ to helpless, repenting sinners. Okay. You know, uh, this is a very important uh, thing. Uh, the first sentence that you have just read, Jacob's experience during the night of wrestling and anguish represents the trial through which the people of God must pass just before Christ's second coming. This is called the uh, Jacob's trouble. Okay. Jacob's trouble has been mentioned in Jeremiah just before the end of the world. Jacob's trouble has been mentioned as an illusion of what Jacob had experienced. You know, in just before Jesus comes, there will be terrible things that will happen to God's people. Persecution, deaths, and a lot of uh, atrocities that will be committed. And God's people will go through the anguish of seeking forgiveness from God. Okay. God's people will go through the experience of asking God for blessings in spite of the impending death traps from the persecutors. In spite of the plagues that is falling just before the second coming of Christ, God's people will experience tremendous upheaval of their emotions and their faith because their faith will be tested to the ultimate. And God wanted to test his people just before Jesus coming so that they can completely rely on God and put aside all idols, all their human uh, sense of security, whether it is money, where there is human relationship. Okay? God also wants among his people to seek forgiveness from one another. Okay? They should not uh, harbor animosity because of petty disagreements. So that Jacob's trouble is going to fall upon every person who is preparing for Jesus' second coming. Okay, this is a very important lesson. Okay, the last quotation. Can I invite uh, Jesse to read? Jesus knows the circumstances of every soul. You may say, I am sinful, very sinful. You may be, but the worse you are, the more you need Jesus. He turns no weeping contrite one away. Freely will he pardon all who come to him for forgiveness and restoration. Yeah. Amen. Okay. No matter how sinful we are, in the eyes of men, we may be hopeless, but in the eyes of God, as long as your hand is still reaching out to Jesus, as long as you are like Jacob, clinging to Jesus until he said, I will change your name from Jacob, a supplanter, to the privileged. So God will give us a new name. Okay, uh, What new name we do not know. The new name is definitely a name of an overcomer. Okay? And may God bless all of us as we remember this important thought. Okay, that's, a, that's the end of our lesson. Any question you'd like to ask before I say a closing prayer? Yes, Pastor. Yes. Uh, we, we talked of idolatry earlier. So my question is, in Genesis 31, uh, there's, there's no, there's no um, single concrete answer online. That's why I asked. Uh, why did Rachel take away her father's house idols? And was that a, and was, did that lead to her eventual death in childbirth? 
<laughs> okay. Uh, by the way, eh, idolatry eh, was very deep seated in the hearts and minds eh, of the time of the patriarchs, even at the time of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In fact, idolatry was tolerated. It was tolerated until the time where Jacob was asked by God, I'm going to renew a covenant with you in spite of all the sins you have done. So Jacob suddenly said that we're going to renew our lives with God. to God. We need to put away the idols. So before that, everyone, not just Rachel, was actually involved in idolatry. Now translate it to, in today's context. Today, we don't have physical idols. Like what Jessie had mentioned when she was sharing, we all have idols. Okay, uh, You had an idol, she had an idol, I have an idol. Okay, These idols are actually priorities that are not in line with God. It could be making money, it could be your studies, it could be your family, it could be your addiction. All of us have. So as long as you cling on to it and you have not confessed, uh, you will not have a right relationship with God. That's why all of us have to go through the Jacob's trouble. Because when Jacob was clinging to, the, to Jesus, right, to the angel, all his hands he could grasp is God himself. His family was ahead of him. His flock and his wealth are all in front of him, walking in front. So his priority is to seek God's blessing. Now, coming back to your question, you see, God is not a vindictive God. Even though there are some idols in Rachel's life, God was still very gracious to her. So whether it was idolatry that led to her early death, we do not know. Because the Bible was silent. But what we can know is uh, God is not a vindictive God. Whatever you have done, you may have sown, you may have sown bad seeds and you reap the consequences of it. But whether it will lead to her eventual early death, nobody knows. But one thing for sure, it's not only Rachel, it's everyone. Okay, it's only Rachel was mentioned. Yeah, I hope I answer your question. Any other question? I think it's time is up. 10.40. Let's bow our heads for prayer and I'll see you in two weeks time. Okay, just a reminder. We have this online Bible study uh, twice a month. First week and third week. So if the month has fifth week, I will also teach. Okay? Let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this lesson of Jacob. He was not perfect. His children were sinful people. And yet, you still have, you have chosen them to be the ancestors of Jesus, the seed of the promise. Same here, Lord, you have chosen us to be inheritors of eternal life. We receive the gospel and begin this spiritual journey. And sometimes we have wrong priorities. We have idols in our hearts. This morning, we, are, we, we want to confess our sin. Just like Jacob and his family who have abandoned all the idols, we like to abandon our idols again and fill our hearts with the Holy Spirit with your special calling to follow you. Help us to follow the example of Jesus who went all the way to the cross, uh, denying himself. May we die to Jesus daily and walk in the newness of life so that our life will full, be full of meaning. Help us to worship you in spirit and in truth and help us to have fellowship 
to encourage one another and bear one another's burden. Help us to be intercessors, to pray for one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, everyone. See you in two weeks' time. Thank you, Pastor Thank Chan. You. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Sabbath, everyone.